Today, we are continuing with the story of Sri Lalita Saki Dasi. And as we are reading about the saints of Raja, saints of Bengal, we have our own story of our own, our brother, our brother, uh, Dagonat, who left yesterday to Radhika. So, we are also privileged to be surrounded by such nice songs, manjaris. We will continue reading now about Sri Lalita Sakidasi. So this was, we were reading from before that Lalita Saki Dasi uh, actually, uh, this is male person, but uh, he was actually in Saki Bhava. So by instruction of his Guru Dev, Radha Raman Charandas uh, Bhava, he started to wear cloth of sakis and they gave him name Lalita Dasi. Today we will continue with the story. So in Radha Raman Kunja, Radha Raman uh, Radharaman Charandas Baba used to eat the Mahaprasad of Radharaman. While the others took the Mahaprasad brought from Janja Pit Mat by Kusum Manjaridas. One day, one kilo rice was offered to Radharaman. The Mahaprasad was consumed by Baba Mahashaya or Radha Raman Charanda Baba and three or four other persons who happened to arrive at that time. After they had eaten, four other persons arrived. Baba Mahashaya asked Lalita Dasi to cook one kilo rice for them. Namadiv Das went and brought two kilos of rice from the house of Kunja Bihari Roy as Biksha, or from like uh, he was begging for rice. Lalita Dasi cooked one kilo out of that and served it to those persons after Voga was offered to Radha Raman. Just after they had finished eating, some other devotees arrived. So Baba Mahashaya again asked Lalita Dasi to cook for them. She cooked the remaining one kilo. At this time, the Mahaprasad from Janja Pitmat also arrived. So Babaji Mahashaya asked Lalita Dasi to serve the rice cooked by her together with the Mahaprasad from Janja Pitmat to everyone. After everyone had eaten, Baba Mahashaya asked Kusuma Manjari Dasi and Rasarangini Dasi to eat what remained. Both of them said, Lalita Dasi has not eaten anything. 
she may also be asked to share. Baba said, do not bother about her. You eat up everything. So they eat, eat up everything. They have eaten everything. When they had eaten, Baba retired for rest. Just after that, a man came from Jenamat with some cilia or rice uh, wetted, parched, and flattened. Milk, and he brought also milk and sweets. Baba noticed that from his room. He said to Lalita Das, Do not offer these things to Radha Raman just now. Let him rest. Offer them when he wakes. Just now you keep them in my room. Lalita Dasi understood that Baba Mahashaya had a new idea in mind. She smiled and kept everything in his room. At four o'clock, those things were offered to Radha Raman. Baba Mahashaya took a bit of Mahaprasad and distributed the rest amongst the devotees, avoiding only Lalita Das. Then he looked at her smilingly and said, Oh, I forgot her. Doesn't matter. Her purpose will be served by the particles that remain in the pots. Accordingly, Lalita Dasi rubbed her finger in the pots, then put in her mouth. So she took just what stayed little in, in the pot <laughs> with her fingers. Surprisingly, that alone appeased her appetite and gave her complete satisfaction. A little before dusk, as Baba Mahashaya was going out for Jagannath Darshan, Bhuvana Sahu's son, called Nitai Das, came with Puri, meaning sort of bread, fried in ghee, that Puri. Kachori, so this is bread made from flour and filled with pulses and fried in ghee. This is Kachori. That, yeah. Mohan bog, some type of uh, pudding, and some other prashad. So he brought different types of prashad. Baba Mahashaya broke away a piece from a puri and without eating it, asked, asked Nitai Das to go and tell Lalita Dasi that it was my Mahaprasad. Nitai Das did accordingly. But Baba Mahashai had already told Lalita Dasi that if she got any prashad from anywhere, she must not consume it. So she, she was a prankster. <laughs> At nine o'clock, when he returned from the temple, he said to her, Where is the prashad? And Lalita said, Why? That was your other Amrita. So I ate it all. Baba says, but, but it was not my other Amrita. But you had yourself conveyed through Nitai Das that, that that was your other Amrita, Ramaha Prashad. Baba Ji said, but that was a lie. I had told so in order to test you. 
uh, let us see. If that was a lie, what I have just said is also a lie. She brought the the towel containing puri, kachori, and mohan bog, and placed it be before Baba Mahasha. Ah, <laughs> so she didn't eat anything. <laughs> so, so Baba Mahashaya was surprised and pleased. He took a small part of the prashad and asked Lalita Dasi to take the rest. In 1905, Babaji Mahashaya left the body to join Nitya Lila or the eternal Lila of Radha. Before leaving the body, he had purchased a Bagan body or house with a garden in which he had installed the Sri Vigraha of Radhakant or the form of Radhakant uh, deity. His Samadhi exists there. It was therefore called Samaj body after the disappearance of Baba Maharaj. Lalita Dasi began to live in Samaj body and do the seva of Sri Radha Kant. She, she began to uh, she began the seva of Radha Kanta according to Ashtakalya Lila, which continues even now. Since the arrival of Lalita Das, Navadvip, also disciple of Radharaman Charan Das Deva, began to pulsate with new life. Oh, sorry, uh, because we have Navadvip the person and this is Navadvip the place, so I mix up. So since the arrival of Lalita Das, Navadvip the place, Navadvip, began to pulsate with new life, new current of bhakti bhava that emanates from her, from Lalita Dasi. Uh, her fame as a Siddha Mahatma spread far and wide. The people of Navadri called her Sakima. Many people heard about her extraordinary learning, deep knowledge of the Shastras, and capacity to solve all kinds of problems relating to spiritual life, and all came to her for guidance. Many came out of curiosity to see how a pandita of her stature lived in the disguise of a woman. They were all sold out to her on account of her powerful personality, Bhakti Bhava, and sweet and loving behavior. But once came to Navadvip Swami Vishwananda, a very influential, self-conceited and fearsome sort of person. He had, by his influence, dethroned the Mahanta of Tarakeshwara because he lived lux luxuriously, which was against the ideal of a Mahanta. He heard that the Mahanta of Samajbadi was a Mahatma who lived in the disguise of a woman, and he became wild with rage. He went to Samajbadi with five or six of his followers. 
At that time, Lalita Dasi was doing bhajana at the roof of her, her kuti or place, house, yeah. Vishwanand, Vishwananda climbed the roof with his men. Lalita Dasi made obeisance to him. But Vishwananda said in anger, Why do you live in disguise to seduce women? Why do you live in disguise to seduce women? You will not be able to cheat anymore. Cheat anymore. Don't you know I am Vishwananda? Throw away your clothes and everything and put on the dress of a sadhu. Lalita Dasi did not say anything. She stood with her head cast downwards, saying, Jai Guru, Jai Guru. Vishwananda stepped forward and shouted in anger, Don't you hear? Take off this cloth, or I shall pull them out. Lalita Dasi stepped backwards and kept saying, Jai Guru, Jai Guru. The news had already spread in Navadvip that Vishwananda would try to strip Lalita Dasi naked and dishonor her. The people of Navadvip could never tolerate this. They were wild with anger. Hazari Babu, the inspector in charge of the police station in Navadvip, also came to know about this. He rushed to Samajbadi with eight of his policemen. In Samajbadi, as Vishwananda was advancing towards Lalitadas, she was shrinking backwards. She was now standing on the edge of the roof with determination to commit suicide by jumping down if he touched her and thus to protect her honor and bhava. Just then, Vishwananda, Vishwananda heard the sound of the boots of the policemen climbing the stairs of the roof and began to tremble with fear. Hazari Babu, or the main police chief of the police, rushed up to him. He held a revolver in one hand and caught hold of Vishwananda with the other and said, You have come to dishonor Sakima. What courage! Turning to his men, he said, take him to the police station. So they took him down the stairs. Lalita Dasi also came down. So she called Hazari Babu and said, Hazari Dada, or brother, if you have any regard for me, please set him free, because he is our guest. It is our duty to honor the guest. <coughs> Lalita Dasi took Vishwananda to the veranda or the balcony of her kuti and insisted on his taking some refreshments. refreshments. He took refreshments while Lalita Dasi sat, sat by his side, fanning him. In the meantime, hundreds of people had gathered with lattice or staffs in their hands and were waiting for Vishwananda to come out. 
they were surprised to see Sakima entertaining and serving him. They began to say to one another, the villain is enjoying Sandesh and Rasagulas and taking service from Sakima. Let him come out. Then we, will, we shall serve him to our heart's content. <laughs> he had come to strip Sakima of her dress. We shall strip him of his skin. Oh. <laughs> so they're so much uh, angry. So seeing that the people of Navadvip had gone wild in anger, Lalita Dasi said to Hazari Babu prayerfully, Hazari Dada, you have to do me one more favor. Let your men take Vishwananda to the railway station and see him off. Otherwise, I do not know what Navadvivasis will do to him. Hazari Babu obeyed, and Vishwananda breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> so he was scared <laughs> so much. Well, we can we can actually see beauty in this. How he was a heavy guy and wanted to do some bad thing to Lalita Dasi, but after all, she accepted him as a guest and even served him. How this how this thing is beautiful actually. How if we think. How this behavior can change hearts. Sometimes we can become angry on someone. And this one time I heard that, that usually anger, fear, and similar things are just one type of call for help. And if we answer in kind, meaning same way, if we answer, like with fear or anger, we are just building that fire. But if we answer with love, love is like water on fire. And this fire becomes smaller and smaller until it finally disappears. And this is Vaishnava, actually. We are seeing through these examples how Vaishnavas, they don't hold grudges. You know, they respect everyone. So this is something to take into our hearts and to think, how are we acting towards other Vaishnavas or other people generally? So everyone appreciated the tolerance of Lalita Saki. But the people of Navadvip felt disappointed because they could not serve the distinguished guests guest as they wanted. <laughs> Lalita Dasi used to deliver discourses or lessons in the evening relating to Madhura Lila of Radha Krishna. While doing so, she used to be so transported, like so much into it, that it appeared as if she was experiencing the Lila directly. Radha Krishna themselves felt so much attracted by her discourses that they came regularly to listen to them without becoming visible to the other listeners. But one day, their presence at that time became known by their footprints 
which they had left. That day, while Lalita Dasi was delivering the last lecture in the veranda before her house, she had to go into the house for a while on account of some work. When she came out, she saw two small footprints on an asana with black cover she used to spread for Radha Krishna to sit during the lesson. Everyone was surprised to see the footprints. For a long time, people used to come to see the footprints. To keep them secure, Lalita Dasi cut the upper portion of the cover and put it inside a glass frame. But slowly, the footprints disappeared. Only the frame remained. Mm. How beautiful. Everywhere where actually she was giving their uh, lesson, there is a special place where Radha and Krishna can come also and listen to the lesson. Wow, how nice and personal, so beautiful. Lalita Dasi used to celebrate the Julan, Rasa, and Holy Lilas with great bhava and eclation, no, with great bhava. At that time, she used to sing songs composed by herself with such bhava that the audience felt transported into the celestial land of Lila itself. She published Sri Surat Katamrita and Sangita Madhava along with her Bengali translation and commentary. She is also the writer of Charita Shuddha, the biography of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva, in six volumes in Bengali. Though her name as the author does not appear on the book. Yeah, this is the biggest book uh, about Radha Raman Charandas Deva, and uh, in the book the, the Life of Love, uh, O.V.L. Kapoor tried to write it in, a, in one book, these whole six uh, volumes that are in Bengali. Lalita Dasi passed away to join, join the Lila of Radha Krishna in 1946. So, very nice person, is Lali Padasi. I think just so. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is one story. And because we still have time, we can start with the next story from the book, which is about Ramadas Babaji. So Sri Ramadas Babaji is so he was born in 1875 in village Nilatuni of district Faridpur in East Bengal. Today 
Bangladesh. His father, Durga Charana Babu, was an excise inspector. He was called Radhika Ranjana by his parents. So Ramadas Babaji was called Radhika Ranjana by his parents. Even in his childhood, Radhika Ranjana manifested the qualities of a Mahapurusha. He could not tolerate the sight of suffering even in animals. One, once he became unconscious to see a goat being sacrificed before Goddess Kali. In that state he cried, Ma, do not carry him away. He is weeping. He could not see the birds inside a cage. He went to the houses of the neighbors having birds in cages and quietly released them. There was no end to his joy when he saw them flying freely. He was a born singer. He had a sweet voice and wonderful memory. After seeing a dramatic performance, he could surprise people by repeating all its songs in exactly the same tone in which they were sung. He was especially fond of Namakirtan. Namakirtana was his play as well as tonic for him. He could hardly live without it. He collected the boys of his age, usually of a low class, and performed kirtana with them. His parents scolded him for this, but without any effect. They thought that the environment of the village was harmful to him and that he might improve if he was sent to the city. So they sent him to Faridpur and got him admitted into the famous Banga Hitaisi, uh, Hitaisi school of Faridpur. The environment of Faridpur proven even more congenial to him. Here he found friends like Sunda, uh, Sundanva Mitra and Bakula Vishwas, who were equally interested in Kirtana and grew like him to be great saints. During those days, the so-called Vaishnavas of the Bau Sampradaya were prominent in Bengal. They went begging from door to door, sung in an attractive manner, and fulfilled their nefarious designs by means of mantras and tant tantric activities. When a bow came and sang at Radhika's door, he used to get so much absorbed in the song that he followed him for some distance. Once a bow hypnotized him and took him to his Akada, his place where he was hiding. In the state of hypnosis, he could not know where he was going and why. 
next morning, when he came to his own, he was scared to see a number of beggars, both men and women, around him and their mysterious, and he could see their mysterious activities. He began to weep. The chief of Baos understood that Radhika belonged to a respectable family, and the police, who might already be going about in search of him, might make a raid on them. He therefore asked the man who had brought him to go and leave him somewhere away from his home. The man again hypnotized him and left him at a place far away from his house. When he regained consciousness, he saw his parents and other relatives sitting around him in deep anxiety. No one said anything to Radhika at that time. But Durga Charana Babu became anxious about his future. He apprehended that his passion for Harinama might lead to disaster. His brother in law, Sri Bharatachandra, Bharatachandra Sen used to say, If you send Radhika to live with me in Niloki, I would soon drive away the ghost of Harinama that has taken possession of him. So he sent Radhika with him to Niloki. In Niloki, Radhika could not chant Harinam or sing as long as his maternal uncle was at home. He sang when he was out or satisfied his cravings for Kirtana by going to some solitary place and singing or by participating in the Sankirtana of Sadhus in some ashrama. But this could not go on for long. Sen Mahashaya came to know about this. He stopped Radhika's going out of the house and gave him so much home task that he hardly found any time to sing. He asked him every day to commit to memory certain sutras of Sanskrit grammar and repeat them in his presence in the evening. Poor Radhika spent all his time memorizing the sutras. The waves of Harinama sometimes rose in his mind. He suppressed them. But sometimes, in spite of him, the waves of Bhava, bursting forth like a tide, swept him away into the deep sea and compelled him to sing unmindful of the consequence. On one such occasion, while memorizing the sutras, he began to sing with great emotion a song of which the plaint was that he lived in a heartless world and there was none to whom he could open his heart and feel relieved. So the theme of the song was that he lived in a heartless world and there was no, no one to whom he could open his heart and feel 
relieved. As he was singing, his uncle was about to enter the house. He stood at the door to hear what he was singing. The tone of the song expressed the pain of Radhika's heart and an attitude of indifference towards one who did, not, who did not want that he should sing. This was too much for Sen Mahashaya to bear. He rushed in, looked at Radhika like a hawk looking for its prey, bound him to a kadamba tree in his courtyard and began to lash him to whip him, lash him right and left with a stick. Radhika's aunt, aunt somehow rescued him from the hands of his brut brutish uncle. But from that day, Sen Mahashaya pledged, like Hiranyakashipu, to rid Radhika of his habit of singing Harinama. He sometimes kept him bound to the tree for all day. Sometimes did not give him food to eat for a number of days. And sometimes in winter made him stand in cold water for hours. Radhika suffered suffered it all patiently, like Pralad, but did not give up Harinam. Ultimately, Radhika's endurance, his faith in Harinama, and the passionate and painful tone of his Kirtanas touched the heart of Sen Mahashaya his uncle. His attitude began to change. On one occasion, Radhika had to go to Faridpur from where he did not return. He was again admitted into the Banga Hitachi school. So, we can see here Radhika was just a boy. So Radhika was eight years old when he met Jagat Bandhu Prabhu. In one stories before, we were reading about Jagat Bandhu. No? Jagat Bandhu, you know who is Jagat Bandhu? We read actually today about Jagat Bandhu. This is Lalita Dasi. Yeah, I think. No, Jagat Bandhu was, no, okay, I mixed. Jagat Bandhu was six separate <laughs> Similar names, so I mixed. Okay, so Jagat Bandhu was at that time 13 years old. But he had already become famous as an extraordinary extraordinarily uh, ordinarily great Mahapurusha. <laughs> Radhika surrendered himself completely to him and began to do sadhana bhajana under his guidance. His studies also continued. In the Chatravriti examination he passed in first division. He was then uh, admitted into a Tola or Sanskrit school for studying Mukda, Mukda Voda Vyakarana. But he could not leave, leave for a second without Bandhu, Chakad Bandhu. Bandhu also could not live without him. Radhika, instead of going to the school, 
went to Bandhu's house in Brahmanakant. Uh, at the time, the tola or school was opened and remained with him till the time it was closed. He spent all the time in Kirtana and talks about Krishna with him, with Jagat Bandhu. The, a special feature of Bandhu's personality was that he became overwhelmed with bhava as soon as he heard the name of Radha. <coughs> Therefore, instead of calling Radhika as Radhika, he called him Sarika. Sarika means a small female bird of the parrot species, which has a sweet voice. So he called him Sarika not to enter, <laughs> to, not to be overwhelmed with bhava when they talked. Once he said to him, Sarika, look, every morning after bath, you take a chatak or 60 milliliters uh, of juice of the leaves of Parabala. And one tola, cow dung, tola is 11.66 grams. So Radhika from that time started taking, taking them. What he said, this uh, juice of leaves of Parabala and uh, one tola cow. In 1891, when Radhika was 15 years old, an important episode took place. The Buno and Santal tribes of Faridpur district had been neglected and ill-treated by Hindus for a long time, in spite of the fact they were Hindus as well. The Christian missionaries took advantage of this. Mr. Mead, a Christian priest, tried to convert them into Christianity. With the help of Mr. Her Herbert, the district magistrate, he fixed a date for their, their baptism. No one had the courage to stand up against the British government and prevent this. But Jagat Bandhu and Radhika could not tolerate it. They determined to set at naught all efforts of Mr. Mead and Mr. Herbert in this connection. On the day on which baptism was to be done, a huge crowd got gathered before the house of Jagat Bandhu at his call with Vnidangas, Karatals, conch shells, bells, and flags, etc. to wage a Sankirtan war against the Christians. The Sankirtan army, divided into seven groups, marched performing Sankirtana through the city to the locality where the Buenos and San Bunos and the Santos lived. As the army marched, the number of soldiers increased. This army, Sankirtan army. The teachers and the students who were going to school the men and women who had come out of their homes to make purchases in the market and the shopkeepers who were going to open their, so their shops forgot everything and joined the army. The sound of 16 Mridangas and the large number of Karatals mixed with the hurry ball sound of innumerable throats rent the sky. 
the main singer in Kirtana was Radhika. Tears, tremor, and other sattvika bhavas, or the symptoms, adorned his body as he went singing and dancing. Others were also overwhelmed with bhava and were singing and dancing with him. Jagat Bandhu was always with him. When he noticed that he was so overwhelmed with bhava that he ran the risk of becoming unconscious and falling down, he followed him closely with both of his hands spread out to protect, protect him. As soon as the Samkirtan procession reached the locality of the Venus, Munos, they were surprised beyond limit to hear the sky rending sound of Sankirtan. They were automatically drawn to it, just as iron is automatically drawn by magnet, and began to sing and dance with others. Jagat Bandhu heartily embraced their little leader Rajanipash. His other companions embraced the other Bunos. And Rajanipas was their leader. Rajanipas was so overwhelmed with Bhava on account of the loving embrace of Jagat Bandhu that he fell unconscious on the ground. When he regained consciousness, he found out that he was completely sold out to him. All his companions had the similar feelings. They had begun to curse themselves for entertaining the thought of conversion into Christianity. The fire of penitence blazed in their hearts. hearts. The Christian mi missionaries were watching the scene with dismay and disappointment. So I think maybe we can stop here because it's already time. So next time we'll continue from this part. I hope all of you hmm? Mm -hmm. Mahabala is telling me just two sentences more so this that we finished this part. After this episode, Jagat Bandhu and Radhika became famous as the two spiritual dignitaries of Paritpu. But in the house of Radhika, it caused an unprecedented upheaval. His people began to think that he had gone completely out of their hands and had started dancing openly on the streets with Jagat Bandhu. He must be sent somewhere outside of Faridpur so that he was deprived of the company of Jagat Bandhu. So they sent him to Barishal to live with his elder brother, Vishwara Babu and study Sanskrit in a school. So we will stop here. Now, this is uh, the story continues, uh, but we can see how much his family was against him being a Vaishnava and were doing everything to, to separate him from any 
Vaishnava or any practice, even his uncle was so much heavy, as we read. But as we know, Radha and Krishna always have some plan. And this we will find out in the next episode. I hope you liked the story till now and we will continue next Wednesday. Bye.